It's a little bit like uh, family photos. You know, you, you keep them for sentimental reason in a really strange way. Um, you know, keeping some of the history and being able to hold it for me, other than you know reading about it and watching documentaries and movies, uh, actually being able to hold it in my hands, it, it's just really grounding. Uh, and so you know, having a, a collection and you know pieces of of whatever it happens to be that tell a story. Um, for me, I think is incredibly, I get a lot of joy out of it, strangely. He's there for all the folk who pop in from early morn till night. Had everything, we, um, like we had tools we had, we sold hammers, we sold eggs, we sold bread, we sold milk. Back then there was no scanning, it was just write the price on it. Get a text to colour and you'd write the price on each item, and that was the way you uh, you knew, you know, what, what things were. On every street corner, there was a corner store, and that was the way. The younger the teenagers now will go and say, "What's a corner store?" There's Aldi's, there's Woolies, there's Coles. I am a member of a family that has had corner stores running through most of our lives up until about three years ago, when we finally sold the business premises, and that was the end. To understand that though, you need to understand what memes are. And memes are, you can think of them as uh, uh, prepackaged frames of meaning. Uh, I usually joke with students that uh, the best memes are never funny, in fact they're invisible. So what this stands for is that uh, frames of meaning which have become so pervasive that we stop seeing them, that have sunk, as it were, into uh, uh, almost a subconscious level of reality. Uh, um, become invisible, but their power is therefore increased because we don't really challenge them, we don't, we don't really contest them. People have in their head when they think of memes is, you know, these funny snapshot images, mm -hmm. right? Um, whereas, uh, um, let me give you another meme. Uh, Australia is the lucky country. That's a meme, right? And it's a very, very powerful meme. Making it work. For the first time in anger, uh, this is a roof tile from a house, uh, it's made of clay, um, house in Hiroshima, and you can see the scorch marks there from the fireball. So going from the, the, the graphite at the beginning to the end result, which is a very sobering prospect, but it essentially was one very large science experiment. It is quite kind of spooky, um, it's real. So, you know, you shouldn't shy away from what's real. Uh, history is there for a, for a reason to teach us lessons. Um, but it is certainly very sobering when you think that if it can do that to a clay roof tile, imagine what that can do to people. This sense of the precarious is something one often feels in New Zealand films. A feeling that something awful is about to begin. But it also seems to me that this lonely road through this indifferent landscape, this isolated space, is the story of cinema in New Zealand itself. The cruelty he and Tubbs subject Hoagie and Jill to is not revenge, but an inevitable byproduct of the mistreatment of the state. Oh, there we go. There is no refuge from our collective settler anxiety on this lonely road, far from the cities and suburbs we have constructed to convince ourselves that we claim dominion over this harsh land and that we have nothing to fear. So, have you walked through the tunnel yourself? We have, or at least I did a walk through just the other day, and it does feel like you're under attack. Yeah, it, so let me just explain. Um, it's really freaking loud, you know, it's an enclosed tunnel and when you're like a pedestrian, like right there outside the car, you hear it, you know, and it's bouncing off the thing and like, it's just so inconsiderate to all the people who 
are going through the tunnel and they're in there for an extended period of time, walk through the tunnel during a busy time of day without headphones and see what it's like.